my sons. I have trained you your whole lives to protect the city above. But I fear you are not ready for its greatest threat. We're taking your armor to the next level. Shredder. Well, it's finally time to talk about the big one. This is the movie that many, many people have been either looking forward to or dreading or perhaps a little of both for the last few months or so. So many people have been talking about this one. Huge blockbuster of a film. It's making money hand over fist. Latest entry in a long-running franchise. I am, of course, referring to Step Up All In. Now, the thing you have to understand about Step Up All In, about its overall theme, its message, if you will, is... I'm just kidding. Of course I'm talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The hell else would I be talking about? Um, this movie... Yeah, I've been looking forward to slash dreading this one for quite some time. Wasn't really sure what to expect after all the rumors and reported reshoots and script changes that they've gone through. Like, I really had no idea how this was going to turn out. Now that I've actually seen it... You know, it's not terrible. I can say that much. I was pleasantly surprised with how not terrible it really was. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's a good movie, because honestly, it's really not. But I didn't really walk out of the theater angry, just a little disappointed in places, because there were there was room for improvement here. Quite a, quite a lot of room for improvements. Uh, do I really need to do a plot summary for this one? It's four giant mutant turtles who are trained in the art of ninjutsu, who also happen to be teenagers, but they can still hold adult conversations, teaming up with April O'Neil to take on the Shredder in New York City. It's a Ninja Turtles movie. What do you want? Overall, it looks like they've taken most of their cues in this film from the, uh, from the 2003 cartoon, although they have little bits and pieces from the classic cartoon in there as well. Uh, Namely, with April being a news reporter once again, and, of course, a few other members of the Channel 6 crew that you might remember from the, from the 1987 cartoon. Uh, but for the most part, for the, uh, the, uh, the origins of the Turtles and Splinter and their personalities, it largely comes from the 2003 cartoon, the Four Kids cartoon. Uh, the origin story has changed a bit, uh, which, that in and of itself doesn't really bother me, because it changes every time. I mean, overall, it still stays mostly the same. The end result is you have a giant rat and four giant turtles who are trained in the art of ninjas. That's... The, the same thing happens here, just how they get to that point is a little bit different, and the way they do it actually kind of ties the turtles and April and Shredder all together, which... Interesting idea, I suppose. Um, uh, the big difference is, unlike pretty much every other incarnation of the Turtles, where they were created by accident, here they were actually the subject of a genetic experiment. Um, the, watching some of the trailers, I got the feeling that they were like trying to engineer some kind of super weapon or something. That's actually not what happens. Uh, they're actually, we're doing experiments on them to uh, come up with basically some sort of miracle cure-all drug. Unfortunately, one of the people working on this had nefarious purposes in mind, and so the other person, who happened to be April's dad, found out about this and decided to kill the entire experiment with fire, and set fire to the lab and burn the whole thing down and evidently accidentally killed himself in the flames. April, however, who was hanging out in the lab and making her own little video diary of the place using a camera that, oddly enough, had a very obvious Bluetooth logo on it. And given that the footage with the young April O'Neil was supposed to come from 1999, that seems a bit unlikely, because technically Bluetooth did exist back then, 
but it wasn't widely available, so that little anachronism there, but anyway. She rescued the turtles and Splinter from the fire, and uh, basically dumped them in the sewer so they could be free. Why taking them home and caring for them herself was out of the question, I don't know. The movie doesn't actually explain this, but... That then, of course, they start growing, and unlike previous movies where uh, Splinter was either formerly the human Hamato Yoshi, who already studied the art of ninja, or was a rat that was a pet of Hamato Yoshi and learned the ninja from him just by watching, here he learns it from a book that he finds. Yeah, uh... Learns it from a book? Really? That, uh... Perhaps not impossible, but that's really the best idea you could come up with. Like, didn't Karate Kid try that and it didn't really work? I mean... That, yeah, you, you can't really learn this stuff from a book and become an expert. It doesn't exactly work that way. And there is no Hamato Yoshi in this version. He's never mentioned... He's just not there, so don't bother looking for him. Uh, the turtles themselves, honestly, I was a little bit worried about their design, and something about the faces still doesn't look quite right. I mean, really, it's the noses. They, they don't look as bad as they did when I first saw them. I don't know if that's because they made some last-minute adjustments to the animation, or if I've just gotten used to it after seeing the trailer a million fucking times. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure which it is, but... Uh, overall, they actually do look pretty good. I kind of like the design. Um, some of the accessories that they carry around seem unnecessary. Uh, Donatello appears to have about 50 pounds of equipment on his back at all times. Also, he has eyeglasses because nerd. And somehow they never fall off. Raphael has a pair of sunglasses that he never actually wears over his eyes. They're just strapped to his headband. And again, somehow never fall off. I just... Whatever, it'll make the toys look cool, I guess. I'm sure that's what they had in mind. But um, as far as, you know, the, they look good, but as far as their personalities and what really makes them the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Nailed it! Seriously, this movie completely gets that right. They are... Dead on. Really like that. The voice actors all did a fantastic job. Even Johnny Knoxville as Leonardo. Um, I Honestly, if I didn't know ahead of time that it was Johnny Knoxville, I wouldn't have known. I mean, he does a really good job with the role, and they, they all do. It's just their personalities really shine through. They are the turtles I remember. Love that about this movie. I really do. Um, Splinter, for the most part, is okay. Uh... He, he was voiced by Tony Shalhoub. He didn't really do a bad job, although... I'm not sure what it was. Maybe it was just the lack of the Japanese accent that was kind of throwing me off, or I don't know. But something about it didn't quite sit right. Not a bad job, just... It maybe could have been better. But, I mean, as far as the character... They, they got it. They, they really got it. He did a good job playing the mentor slash father figure for these turtles and in fact they do re refer to him as a father they call him dad a few times now this movie does have michael bay's name attached to it as a producer and of course a lot of people were worried about that oh it's going to be just like transformers but you have other people saying no 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 he's not directing it it's going to be okay you know just look give some the, give the benefit of the doubt to the guy who is going to direct it, which was uh, Jonathan Liebsman. I hope I'm saying that right. Probably not. I have a gift for mispronouncing people's names, but we'll, we'll see. But anyway, it's a Michael Bay film. It, Liebsman is trying to be Michael Bay so hard. It has everything you would expect from a Michael Bay movie. Lots of action scenes, lots of fight scenes, all of which, for the record, are very well done. Which even Michael Bay does well. That's, that is his bread and butter. He knows how to do action. Um, 
clunky dialogue. It's got that. Uh, focusing on Megan Fox's ass. <laughs> It's got that. A uh, little too much focus on the human characters and not enough focus on the non-human characters, much like Transformers. It's got that. Although it's not nearly as bad as Transformers was in that regard. It handles it much better. Um, unfortunately, pretty much the first half hour of this movie focuses almost entirely on April. Uh, which is a bit of a problem because A... This movie is not called April O'Neil featuring the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They are supposed to be the stars of the movie. And eventually they are, but it takes a while to get to that point. Uh, for, for that first half hour, there were a couple of brief glimpses here and there, but that's really all. Until uh, April O'Neil actually meets them in person for the first time. And the, the big problem here... Not only are they putting too much focus on April, but it's Megan Fox. And but what, what do I really need to say about Megan Fox at this point? She's just, she's not a very good actress. And she, this is probably one of her better efforts, but it's still Megan Fox. And she's still not very good. She's nice to look at, sure, but that's really all she has going for her. And I wish they would stop casting her in these high-profile roles that she clearly does not have the talent to pull off. You know, no, no offense to her. I'm sure she's a very nice person. But she's just not that good. She, she, she was so not ready for being such a high-profile actress. Really was not. The comedy, for the most part, works pretty well. Uh, the Turtles, of course, they, they are serious fighters, but they do show their goofy side as well for a very good chunk of the film, and most of the time it does work. The Foot Clan. Okay. Being a lifelong Turtles fan, I grew up watching the uh, the Playmates cartoon, the, the one that started in 1987. Loved it. I had tons of action figures, which sadly I don't have anymore. I sold those all at a garage sale a long time ago. Kind of wish I still had a few of them. I've watched a, a bit of the 2003 cartoon as well, like the first three seasons or so. I've seen the new cartoon as well. think it's pretty good. Uh, read a little bit of the old Mirage comics uh, back when some of the early issues were actually posted on their website before they sold their stuff to Nickelodeon. Uh, saw the original live-action movies. Haven't seen the CGI movie, which came out in 2007, I think. I haven't seen that one. That's... Really, that and the, uh, the short-lived live-action TV series, that's all I haven't seen. But, yeah, the rest of it, I'm, I'm very familiar with these characters, and I don't like what they did with the Foot Clan in this. They're not ninjas. They're just terrorists. That's it. They shoot guns at stuff. Lame. Especially since the turtles are virtually bulletproof. They are so useless. And I mean, granted, the turtles rarely had trouble defeating the foot soldiers, but in this movie especially, they are just worthless. Oh, and so just generic. Now, as far as the villain... Here's something that I'm sure had a lot of people very, very worried, myself included. So let me just make this perfectly clear. This is maybe qualifies as a spoiler, but honestly, it's a spoiler you all need to hear. William Fickner's character, Eric Sachs, is not the Shredder. And you may all join me in a collective sigh of relief in three, two, one... <sighs> yes, for, for anyone who might not know, they originally announced that William Fickner was playing the Shredder. Can you say whitewashing, boys and girls? Yeah, yeah, Eric Sachs, Orokusaki, I see what you did there. I see it. I don't like it, but I see it. But turns out he is not the Shredder. Although it's painfully obvious he was supposed to be. 
Oh, they didn't even try to hide it. The, the Shredder is actually played by a... Uh, what was his name? He's a Japanese actor. I, I think he's actually part Japanese, part Canadian. Uh, Tohoru Masamune. And so, so, yeah. Shredder is Japanese in this movie. I don't know if it's actually supposed to be Oroku Saki. They never mention him by any name apart from Shredder. That's it. So... I guess we can go ahead and just assume it's Saki. Why not? But yeah, this was clearly a last-minute change. There are only, I think, two scenes where we see the Shredder outside of his armor. We never actually see him don his armor. And of course, when he's in his armor, it's, I think, pretty much just all CGI. And it's just a voiceover, so anyone could have done that. And there's only two scenes he's in, and they're both shot in the same room. It's, this was clearly an afterthought. They, they were going to have him play the Shredder. And he even said in an interview that he was playing the Shredder. And I think, I, I have heard, I haven't played it, but I've heard in the 3DS tie-in game, Eric Sachs is still the Shredder. Now, I'm glad they made this change. The big problem with this is Sachs was clearly supposed to be their primary villain, they pulled a lot of focus on him, and once we find out he's really not the primary villain, then there's not really much point in him being there. And, you know, it's, it's nothing against William Fickner. He's a good actor. But, you know, as just this genetic scientist guy who's working for the Shredder, he's not all that threatening. There is no... Obvious connection between Shredder and Splinter, as there was in previous cartoons and movies and whatnot. Uh, they seem to suggest that Splinter knows who Shredder is, or at least is familiar with him. They don't really explain why. Um, kind of like the first movie, he does have some kind of scarring on his face. They don't explain how it got there. I guess it was just thrown in there as fan service. Uh, and they don't really explain the villain's motivations very well. As far as I can tell, Eric Sack's motivation is money. That's all he wants. He wants money. I don't know why. The dude's got a freaking castle up in the mountains. He doesn't seem to be lacking for money. He's the CEO of a, what appears to be a very successful genetic research corporation. Why does he... I, I, I don't know. And although I will say at least that's something because I have no idea what Shredder's motivation was. And I don't think the writers did either because this was clearly a last minute change. Basically, he's participating in this scheme because evil. Yeah. Also, Shredder's new armor Oh, Lord, they got carried away with that. Oh, 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 just, no, no, needed to rein that in. Really needed to rein that in. The mask looks cool. I will give them that. I like the mask. But the man has knives all over the place, like 50 of them just coming out of nowhere. It's just, it's too much. It's just way too much. It is just laughably bad. That no. They went too far with that. What else can I talk about here? Karai is in the movie. Not much more to say about her. She's in the movie. Uh, no mention of any relationship between her and Shredder. She's a member of the Foot Clan. Clearly a prominent member since she's barking orders at people in a couple of scenes. She's in the movie. That's uh, Clearly this was just fan service. I... I, I just, I don't even know why she's in there. Uh, I already mentioned April. Uh, for the rest of the Channel 6 crew, uh, Whoopi Goldberg has a couple of very short scenes playing Bernadette Thompson, obviously meant to be a female version of Burn Thompson from the 1987 cartoon. She did fine for what little she had to do. Um, really, all she does is listen to April tell her crazy stories about how she encountered the Ninja Turtles and then tell her she was crazy and go away, little girl. 
Will Arnett plays Vernon. And sadly, not very well. I don't really blame him for this. Just, they didn't really... It seems like they didn't give him a lot to work with, or he just didn't really get the character. He needed to be a lot whinier and a lot more flamboyant, because as it is, he really did not have any character traits, except he thought April was hot. That's about it. Oh, and Baxter Stockman is supposedly in the movie. He's listed on IMDb and on Wikipedia. Either he's been reduced to just a background character, or his scenes were cut, because I never saw him. I've heard he's in there somewhere, but, but when this comes out on DVD, I'll have to give it another watch and see if I can play Spot the Stockman. <laughs> yes. I did see this movie in 3D, and they were given out little cardboard cutouts you could stick on the glasses that looked like the turtle's headbands. And of course I took one. Because I am not above getting in touch with my inner child. I really can't recommend seeing this in 3D. It's, it's not that it's badly done, it's, it's competent. But really, you shouldn't be paying your money for competent 3D. You should pay for good 3D. Whether it's rendered in 3D or a post-conversion, like this is, doesn't matter. Now, the first two or three minutes look very good. It's... It opens with this, like, hand-drawn sequence of images, uh, kind of reminiscent of the old comics, and that's all been computer-rendered, and it's rendered in 3D, and it looks amazing. But pretty much everything after that is just... It, it's a 2D movie that's been post-converted, and it shows. So, yeah. Save your money. Don't see it in 3D. Not even for the cardboard cutout. It's not worth the extra money, sadly. Just don't. Now... Whether you should see this at all, I will say this. This is a kid's movie. It is targeted at children. Yes, it does have a PG-13 rating, but it's on the lower end of a PG-13. It's, it's pretty tame. There's a little bit of language and, of course, some violence, but the violence is all very cartoonish. So your kids are going to eat this up, definitely. They will love this, I am sure. Now, if you're an adult who grew up with the Turtles and you're an old-school fan, maybe see it as a matinee. I can't really recommend it at full price. There is quite a bit of stuff to like here. Like I said, the Turtles, they nailed. It's just everything else that's kind of a mess. Um, and clearly they were trying to do something for the old school fans because there are a lot of callbacks in here. There's a callback to the first live action movie. Uh, the ooze canister that changes the turtles and Splinter into the giant mutant creatures they are is once again labeled TCRI. TCRI is never mentioned again in the entire movie. I don't know why it's there apart from fan service, but it's there. Uh, the old theme song is also briefly featured uh, towards the end of the movie. So yeah, they're, clearly they're trying to bring the old school fans on board. They're trying so hard, but really, if they wanted to bring the old school fans on board, this needed much better writing and much more of the Turtles. That's what it needed. So maybe as a matinee, I can't really go beyond that for a recommendation. So, but for what it's worth, I didn't leave the theater unhappy and... It does look like they're going to make a sequel. They kind of hinted at that at the end of the movie to a certain extent. Um, and they've already talked about possibly introducing Bebop and Rocksteady down the line. And it's making plenty of money, so I'm sure that will give them all the reasons they need to make a sequel. I just hope that they put more focus on the Turtles. Put more focus on the part you got right. Please, Nickelodeon and Michael Bay, do the right thing here. And I know they won't, but we can hope. <laughs> so that's all I got to say. Take care. So they're aliens? No, that's stupid. They're turtles. Is there anything else we should know about them? They're ninjas. <laughs>